Sir, hope you're well. It's been a long day. I'm gonna do a little different. My fuzzy's missing, I took them off. It's driving me nuts. Every time I edit my video, my fuzzy's hanging in the video. So it is what it is. We're gonna just gonna have to learn to accept fuzzy is no longer in the picture. So today's video is gonna be a little different. It's about transparency. It's about showing when you're wrong, where you messed up, so others can learn from your mistakes. That's the goal of this video. So currently, I have a friend Timmy over from Negative Camber helping me out. So our combined efforts, we came to a conclusion, which we're gonna show you shortly. So before I forget, I would like to give a shout out to a couple of channels for you guys on your free time to check out. They've helped me, they've shouted me out, and I wanna do the same for them. So number one is gonna be Jerry Ain't Loud, big bass head, 160 plus decibels, like steering column shaking, windshield breaking, booty cracking, pants smacking, all that shit. You gotta check his channel out if you're a bass head or even just go and say hi. Next channel would be LT's Garage. It's a good dude, just moved to Florida. He's building his uh, Chevy Love. And then my next channel would be Boogie Chassis from Pennsylvania. It's got the same concept, body drops, you know, mini trucks, tilt beds, all that cool stuff. So please, when you get some time, check them out. All right, guys, so Timmy's gonna help me with showing uh, what's going on with this picture. Minor setback, but it's part of the process, trial and error. I got a little excited and I goofed up. So here goes. So currently, the way I have this link set up is it's very low down here. And what was throwing me off was the bends I put in the bars for being parallel to the ground. And I'll show you that in a, on our cardboard uh, uh, test sample. But essentially right now what's happening is when you raise and lower the suspension, the arc totally off. And again, you're going you're gonna to see that. So uh, Timmy and I both came to agreeance. We're going to flip this bracket around. So the mounting location is higher. It'll, it'll be more like, like about here, which is roughly four more inches. Might peek up through the floor. Hopefully not. If it does, I'll just have to hole saw and make a little, you know, cover to cover this little tab. But let's go to the chalkboard and show you what we've got. Basically what's happening right now is This is how the bar, the link bar, is set up in the chassis right now. So when I raise the suspension, if you follow this line right here, you can see the arc is pushing the rear, because this is attached to it, towards the back of the car. And that's no good. I was saying that when you raise the suspension, the bar is parallel with the ground. Well, the bar technically is parallel with the ground, but it's nowhere near parallel to the ground. And I'm gonna show you right here. This would be parallel to the ground. So this contraption, all it did was confuse me. And it's easy, shit happens. Transparency. Right, Tim? That's right. Would you rather me not say it? Hey, man, I, I messed up. Or would you rather me say, hey, look, I messed up, and here's why, and here's what we're going to do to fix it. So. And we cannot do that on ours. Yeah. So Timmy and I came up with a nice location. We're going to shorten this bar. I want to say four inches, three and a half inches. Just going to cut it off here at the very end. 
I'll retap some uh, some threads, but to give you an idea, this link bar is basically four inches shorter. So I'm gonna put this to the ground. Mount this here. And this would be our, our new mounting location right here. And you can watch the arc when you're raising the car up. It's very minimal. It stays in a much more vertical plane. It's not completely straight, but more straight than the other. Plane. Yes. And if I, if we move the mount down lower, well, then you can see you're almost pretty much vertical. In theory, when we cantilever this setup, the bag is going to get mounted right about here. The car is going to have probably a good 10, what do you say, maybe 10, 12 inches of lift easily because a, a 2,600 pound bag is, I want to say nine inches, about nine inches, 10 inches, somewhere in that, in that range, depending on how much pressure, you know, you, you uh, put into the bag. But this right here represents parallel to the ground. So when she raises her car up five inches cruising, the four link will be parallel to the ground. Well, the two link. If I cheat it and move it down further, which I may end up doing anyway, you would you would have to raise it four inches to get the bar parallel to the you know to the ground. So number one, I really should contact the customer and ask the customer, hey, where do you think you would feel comfortable cruising your car at? Two inches off the ground, three inches off the ground, four inches off the ground, because that's gonna change the mount that I have to make coming off of the back of the axle. So that was one of the things I wanted to point out to you guys. Getting back to my fancy bar. I can also put a string through there too to give you that imaginary. Which is definitely what I should have done. So if I mount use this bar the way it is, shortening it two inches, and I mount it here, she'll have to go almost five and a half inches to get, you know, the, the car, uh, the bar parallel to the ground. Which is way less where the bag mounts to get that amount of lift, so that's perfect. Yeah, so I made a little cardboard template. This is all, all the way aired out. And when you raise the suspension, your bag is pretty much vertical. It's going to arc very minimal, but that's pretty dang good. What do you say, Tim? I like it. Let's do it. So now what I'm left with is I've got to shorten this bar four inches, which would move it to where it is right here which is basically this bar to sum it up in a, in a nutshell. And it would be mounting here. And again, all depending on where I mount it in this zone, I don't want to be, be mounting it here because you can see the arc, how it's pushing it back. I'd rather mount it here this way when she, is three inches off the ground or four inches off the ground. That's how we do it. It's barely moving. So I hope this clears some things up with you guys. This is the actual rear end location when the car is aired out. 13 and a half inches. The edge of this metal represents the ground and all these lines represent different mounting locations. So here's another scenario I forgot to mention. Let's say we went and we moved the mount a total of six and a half inches from the ground, from the bottom of the chassis, up. Well now, yes, that in theory looks a whole lot nicer. 
but can I get away with doing this under the car? Will I have enough room? I'm not sure. I, I probably would say yes, there should be enough clearance. But if I mounted it like so, you can see the arc again, which is right here. Very, very minimal. Very minimal. And the bag barely flexes. Timmy, you want to measure that each side? You got three and a quarter. Three and a quarter there. Three and a half there. Three and a half. So it flexed a, a, a quarter of, a, of an inch. That's pretty good. That's nothing. It's made to do that. It's not like you're bananaing, you know, you're, you're going to banana shape the air uh, the airbag which which we don't we don't want to do so I'm left with a couple of decisions I'm gonna reach out to the customer big shout out to mr. Tim for for helping me today with all this he made me some brackets for uh, for the airbag all I have to do now is pretty much adjust the height of of how this is this is basically basically go right here like so and you can see if I if I raise the one side up it flattens the bag out or if I change the position for the cantilever let's say I mount it right here yeah so the bridge exactly the bridge isn't made I don't know how, know how much I want to stay inside the arc of the of the chassis rail I don't want to go outside the arc because now I'm going to risk cutting through the floor and making a big old mess. So I could mount this here <clears throat> and shorten it up or lengthen one side up. I could mount it here maybe. Obviously you could mount it here, but then you'd be coming through the floor and that doesn't look right. So, so it was a long day, a non-productive day, uh, going back to school day. And then just, again, like I said, man, being honest, keeping it real with you guys spent the whole day grinding brackets figuring out geometry on the rear which I should have done but I didn't I had some guys here from negative camber to here now I'm gonna show you one of their trucks very nice Maverick air ride beautiful and uh, well call it good so we got Scotty from Negative Camber. He stopped by with his 2022 Maverick. It's all-wheel drive on 22s with an airlift 3P setup. Pretty bitchin' truck. Turbocharged, all the fancy bells and whistles. Gorgeous, gorgeous truck. Most of all, pow. A lot of work done to it. Your interior is custom, right? That's not, that's stock? Holy cow. It's gorgeous stock. You want to pop the hood? Very cool. Who'd you say the kit was from? Chassis Works? Chassis Works, I think. Chassis Works um, air suspension kit. Very cool. Did you do any work to the motor? Just got a blow off valve. Just a blow off valve. That's it. Very cool. How's it ride? Rides good. Yeah? I drove it home from Oklahoma. <laughs> That's Timmy. That's Scotty. That's Donnie. Everyone stopped by to say hi. Yeah, man. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. I'm going to put a link to his page. Check out his page. All wheel drive Maverick. Scott holding his own. That's where we're at. That's going to do it for this video. Transparency is key. Admitting when you're wrong and learning from your mistakes. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you next Thursday.
with a kick-ass video of the Jungle Gym. Keep it low.